When you think of comfort food, what comes to mind to everybody, almost everywhere in the world, is some kind of stew. And in America, that's usually going to be beef stew. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what are the best ingredients to put in here, what are the greatest techniques you can do, and then what order you need to put things in to come up with the best possible beef stew I've ever had. I borrowed a couple of things from home cooks, from French chefs, and even from some Japanese techniques. What I've come up with is what I personally think is the best beef stew you could possibly have. A lot of people think winter is the best time to make stew, and who am I to argue? It is the perfect cold weather dish. Nothing is better than coming in from shoveling the snow and having a big steaming bowl of stew to help warm you up. A lot of times I'll even double the batch or even triple the batch and then freeze the leftovers so I have it on hand whenever I want it. Supermarkets today have made it really easy to buy the meat that you need for stew. A lot of times it's even labeled stew meat. But if you're looking for a good price deal, look for things that are labeled round or chuck. They're going to be a little bit tougher, but they need that long cooking time in a slow, low simmering liquid and will extract all the flavor and you'll get a truly tender piece of meat when you're done. What's key to this is the seasonings. We're going to build layers into this stew by starting out with a little bit of salt sprinkled directly on the meat. The salt is going to help bring out a little bit of the flavor and also tenderize it just a little bit. One of the spice blends I really like is Herbs de Provence. Typically it's made with rosemary, thyme, oregano, and lavender. Now lavender sounds like an odd ingredient to add to a beef stew, but trust me, it's going to give you a nice flavor that you're not going to identify as flowers, but it's going to meld really nicely with the beef and all the other ingredients. One of the key ingredients of this stew is the red wine. We start out with a lot of it two cups in fact and then we're going to reduce it down so we're concentrating that flavor even more classically red wine and beef go together really really well so to me it was a great addition to the stew that really builds one extra layer in there if you don't have red wine go ahead and substitute beer that's another classic pairing with beef that works really really well Another great thing about this stew is it's very, very versatile. I picked some very classic vegetables to put in here like potatoes, carrots, but you can substitute anything you want. A lot of times I'll put in sweet potatoes because I love the flavor and the texture that they give. But go ahead and add anything you want or leave things out. One of the techniques I've learned from a lot of Japanese cooking is you need a little bit of balance. And so with a fatty stew like this, I like to add a little vinegar in the form of balsamic vinegar. It cuts through a lot of that fat, it helps brighten up the flavor, and it helps meld everything together. It's an addition you should not leave out. I've written this recipe in a very specific way in order to build flavors one on top of each other. From the very beginning to the very end, you're layering one flavor on top of each other and you're going to end up with an exceptional stew that you and your family are going to love.